Thank you, George. I will be going in on the technical side of the Flora toolset. As an overview, the Flora toolset has four core nodes, the control, component, switch, and the solver. The first three, the control, component, and switch, are there to set up rules, and the solver is really just solving all the rules, and on a generation step-by-step -step basis, it's going to spawn all the components. This solver-based approach uh, to fol foliage generation is loosely similar to L systems, but it's definitely its own thing with a high focus on control for the artist, but still to be generative, which means you get a lot of complexity. Right now we'll be diving into a quick example file. This is a bird tree being generated with the Flora tools. It's an example file set up by George. It exists out of two parts. The bottom part is the meshing stage. I won't be going in on this too much. It's basically some meshes and some leaves be which are being placed and then combined. The interesting part over here is the flora system, which is over here very linearly for this birch tree. And what you can see is that every component corresponds with a colored branch type. So we can isolate them. So right now I'm isolating component number three, which is the origin. And let's have a look at number four, which is this node, basically this branch, which is being placed on top of component two. So let's have a look at component two, because that's where previous one is being spawned on top of. And that's how you have to look at these components. They're like components of your plant. And we can add rules to these specific components. So right now you can see they're all bending a little bit downwards. And that, because, that is because over here in the simulation tab, we have some gravitropism. And this is how much it listens to uh, gravity. If we visualize this, we can now play with this. And for example, we can move it a lot more downwards, which means that the branches will be pointing a lot more down. Let's have a look. And there we go. And that, of course, affects the whole shape of the tree. And that's what makes this so powerful. We have a lot of control to grab the field you want to grab and to start playing around with it. So what we can do right now is to set up our own little tree. Let's try to make something that resembles a pine tree a little. So Laura Solver. And let's throw in a component. A component and once we throw this in you can see it's pointing a little bit sideways the ux is definitely going to get another update now let's move it to the middle and let's play a little bit of these settings so right now it's going straight up we can see that it has had it has eight generations we are controlling the amount of generations with our frames and we can see on this component there's a maximum of eight generations so after eight it will stop we can play around with the number of branches so if we set this to two you can immediately see that it's going to explode so every generation basically it now tries to spawn two we could then for example move the gravitropism up a little bit and move up the Gravitropism again, and immediately you can see we're getting a lot of complexity. Let's move this one back to one, and let's right now add some kinkiness, which is adding some kink to our tree, which is all very much based in real nature. As we are twisting, basically each generation there's a twist of 137.5 degrees, and then the kinkiness is, which is uh, the offset, it is also. Uh, rotating so that's why it's making this weird kink which is a very natural organic way a plant can grow now let's start placing some stuff behind this so if i place another component or a component and for this node i can say right now let's make it two generations and this one we're also gonna let it grow down a little bit so we can easily see where it lives. 
And right now it is being placed on each of its parent generations. So we have the main stem right now. And now we also have a uh, child which is being placed on each of its parent generations. But we could also say that we only want it to be spawning at the end. But sometimes you want to have that control. And we could say right now we actually do want it to start branching. So there we go. Adding a bunch of branches. And do a little bit more. And for example we can now say we want this one to be a little bit more flat. Because that's what we like. And you can see very quickly we are adding a shape of our tree. And then we also have a control node. I won't be setting it up right now. But basically what the control node does is that you link it to your component node. And with the control node, we you can make sure that uh, a, a parent attribute or a uh, driven attribute will be driving a passenger attribute. So for example, you could say at a certain height, I want the branch count to be maximum of three. Or you could say, I want the gravitro prism, so the branch is going down, only to take effect after the tree is already this large. And this gives you a lot of control to really determine the shape of your, uh, your plant. I'm just very excited to bring more of this stuff to you guys. All right.